Well, guys, one thing that is always a constant is tax reporting. Yay, we are in tax reporting season. So I have a few things that are new this year and a few reminders of things that are not new. So first, let's start with deadlines. This is not new, guys, but just as a reminder, January 31st was when tax forms were sent, but those are just the W-2s and 1099s. So February 15th is actually when 1099s will be due for your taxable accounts. So in other words, if you have money coming out of an IRA, you probably already got that form and could even start filing your taxes. If you have money elsewhere in a taxable account, an investment account that's not tax sheltered, wait, don't file your taxes just yet. Wait until a little bit later in February and that's when you should have all your forms in order. March 15th is when taxes are due for some business types, April 15th for most individuals. Or if you don't have all of your things and your data together, you can file an extension of form 4868 and then tax day for you is October 15th. Yay. Another good reminder is April 15th, tax day, is the deadline to make an IRA or an HSA contribution for tax year 2023. So right now, you're kind of in a cool position where you can double dip if you forgot to make an IRA or HSA contribution. You can still do it for 2023, but not after the tax filing deadline. And then finally, May 31st is when the forms reflecting those IRA contributions are sent out. Those are called 5498s. And everyone gets confused because, wait a minute, I, I contributed for tax year 2023. How come I don't get a form to help me with my 2023 taxes? Well, that's because you can still make those contributions until after, until up to April 15th. So they can't create the forms until May. I know it's a little bit backwards, but it's the IRS. So what are you going to do? Those are the reminders on the deadline. So what forms are we talking about? Well, common forms these are not new. Your W-2 comes from your employer and that's where most people's tax information lives. You could also get a 1098 reflecting some mortgage interest, uh, 1099-Rs, DIVs and EINTs. Those would come from your financial institutions. Those have not changed this year. So if you're used to getting those, nothing's changed for you. It's fine. If you have questions that some of this information is new, you're not quite sure, hop on over to one of our playlists on YouTube. We are doing a new playlist called Tax Forms Explained. So pop on over to that and check it out. And I go through some of the tax forms and try to give you some information about what to expect on each of these. Let's move along now to what is new. Surprise! There's this form now called a 1099K. Now the form itself is not new. What is new is the people who are going to be aware of this form and have to start reporting. So what happened was the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021 required third-party settlement organizations to report on 1099Ks. So this is not new, all right? But what is new is the amount. Third-party settlement organizations are banks that process credit card transactions for emergent. These are names you're probably familiar with. PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, even marketplaces like eBay and Etsy, and gig workers who maybe work for Uber or Lyft. All of these people are affected by the 1099K. So what's the deal? Well, the old rule is you would receive a 1099K if you had over 200 transactions in a year and the total was more than $20,000. Didn't affect the majority of taxpayers. Most taxpayers that are in the situation of Etsy or selling something on eBay or even using Venmo aren't probably going to have over $20,000 and over 200 transactions. So this form was not on the radar for a lot of people. However, new rule came along and that American Rescue Plan Act now requires a 1099k if the total is over $600. Whoa, big change. So as you could probably anticipate, a lot of pushback on this, a lot of confusion, a lot of questions. And the IRS went, okay, wait, 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 wait. Sorry, this is pretty confusing. So we're going to put a pause on that $600. And we're going to do a threshold instead, kind of ease you into this. So they said for 2023, never mind. It's back to the old rule of $20,000 or 200 transactions. For 2024, so going forward here, if the total is over $5,000, then you can expect a 1099K in 2025, right? So it's just something to think about this year as you are transacting business, but you won't get a form most likely 
this tax season. It'll be next tax season. Now, one thing to keep in mind. So the Fed is the one that said, hey, we make this new total $5,000 for this new threshold, but a handful of states are using that $600 threshold. They're not giving you a buy. They're they're making you follow those rules now instead of easing you into it. I looked at it was only a handful and it wasn't states that most of our clients are in. So most of our clients probably don't have to worry about this, but just something to be aware of. So next, what is this applied to? Wait a minute, Laura. Uh, does this mean if I give my aunt some money because we shared a dinner and we used Venmo to do that, am I going to get a 1099K? No, no. The IRS did recognize that these apps are often used for personal transactions. And this is not intended to snag your personal transactions into a tax form. Okay, that's not what it's intended for. So this does not apply to birthday or holiday gifts that you give to someone or receive using Venmo or Cash App or one of those. It also does not apply to the cost of sharing a ride or a meal, and it doesn't apply to paying a family member for a household bill. These types of personal transactions are not what the rule and the form are intended for. However, what it does apply to is selling personal items like clothing or furniture, even if the seller has no tax liability from the sale. In the guidance that the IRS has issued, actually, they just updated this a couple of days ago, just this week. What they say in their notice is the casual sale of goods and services, including selling used personal items like clothing, furniture, and other household items for a loss, could generate a Form 1099-K for many people, even if the seller has no tax liability from these sales. I'm sure that further guidance will come from the IRS. Check out their website. They keep updating it. They recently updated the FAQs and they do have some important guidance on what to expect from a 1090K and what to do when you get one. This link will also be in the description on YouTube. So check out the IRS. They're the ones that are calling the shots and giving the guidance right now. And they're also responding to feedback on this new rule. That's why they have the threshold now for this year. All of this I know can be confusing, but here's my takeaway on this as a financial planner. And that is tax sheltered vehicles might be more attractive. If you are a small business owner, if you even are doing a side hustle, let's say on Etsy or eBay or something like that, and you're concerned about your tax bill, guess what? There are some things you can do. Tax sheltered vehicles, either as a solo employer or just as an individual that has an IRA, those can help you to lower your tax liability by putting away dollars into a retirement program that then is a tax shelter for you. So it's kind of cool. And if it's not on your radar, it should be. If you are a an entrepreneur, you should be thinking about things like a simple IRA, a solo K, or a SEP. These are tools that many entrepreneurs aren't aware of, I find. And they're very, very useful for helping to limit tax liability, especially if it's just now coming onto your radar. Mm-hmm.